G'day guys, this is Tier and welcome back to another Fallout 76 build video. Today I am going to be showcasing my min-maxed, bloodied shotgun build, the Enforcer. If your goal is to create a badass, tough, high damage dealing shotgun wielding character build, then you're in the right place. As always, for your convenience, timestamps for everything this video covers will be on screen and down below in the description, alongside the actual link to the written version of this build via the Nukes and Dragons website. Feel free to make full use of that if you want to, as it will have all the information you'll need. Reminder that this can be one of your many, many builds on your many characters thanks to the perk loadout machine as you can see here. I will be showing you guys two variations of this build, one for tanking and one for stealth. I figured instead of making two separate build videos on what is essentially the same character, I would combine both aspects into the same build with the loadout machine. All it takes is a click of a button and you're set up for tanking or stealth, which brings a nice duality to this build. And as always, the playlist to my build videos will be also linked down below in the description if you want to see all of the other fantastic builds I have released. And finally, I have condensed this build's strengths and weaknesses into a star ranking system so that you can see early on in the video if this is something you want to give a crack at. Anyways, before we get into the build itself, I'd like to finish off the intro by explaining what this build's all about. The Enforcer is the single most hyper-optimized Fallout 76 bloodied shotgun build you will find on YouTube. We have the most damage you can possibly achieve with shotguns. We have fantastic VAT sustain, as we will be fully utilizing the VAT's critical system in this build. We also have great tanking potential and an equal ability to utilize stealth if we choose to do so. And that's the fantastic thing about shotgun builds. We have the option of duality. We can be incredibly formidable and durable in one aspect, and then flip the switch quite easily and become a silent assassin. So really, the choice is yours. This build has high focus on damage output no matter what the situation calls for, as well as extended survivability. And to top it all off, we have the ability to pop off a critical shot in VATS every second shot, which essentially overclocks our damage output by an insanely high factor. If you've ever wanted to feel like the Doomslayer and just mow your way through Appalachia with a double barrel shotgun without a worry in the world, this build will give you that opportunity. Or, if you've wanted to become a fully realized covert shotgunner, silently dismembering all of your foes before they even knew what hit them, this build also allows you to do just that. Now with all of that said, let's get straight into it and talk about the special points. So to create the Enforcer shotgun build for yourself, you will need to have the same special stats I do in the video. Do take note that I have made use of two fully maxed out legendary special cards to achieve the build you see in this video. And make no mistake, the legendary perk cards are an integral part of making this build as effective as I have displayed here. We will need the extra 10 special points that legendary luck and legendary agility give us. So make sure those two legendary perk cards are high on your priority list because you will need them. Anyway, to create this build you will need the following special points at base value. 15 strength, 3 perception, 5 endurance, 4 charisma, 8 intelligence, 10 agility, and 11 luck. Those are the default special points you'll need for this build and will be your keys to success for a sturdy foundation. From there with the legendary special cards taken into consideration, everything shall remain the same except for our agility which will be boosted to 15 and our luck will rise to 16. Now I have done all of this for a reason which I will explain deeply in the legendary perks section of the video. In summary though, the legendary agility is of great benefit for our playstyle and the legendary luck allows us to pop a critical shot every second shot in VATS. So for now, just trust me and work with it. Anyway, with that said, I will show you what our special points will look like once the build is finished. Once you take into consideration of our mutations, unyielding armor, and everything else, our special stats will be the following. 24 strength, 23 perception, 8 endurance, 19 charisma, 21 intelligence, 34 agility, and 33 luck. This is what your build should look like if you copy everything in this video down to the letter. And these stats will be very beneficial for us as a shotgunner. Whether we are tanking or sneaking, we will do just fine, especially since we have 33 luck, allowing us to shoot a critical every second shot, whilst in VATS. I'll break that down here quickly. We have 11 base luck, plus 15 from the unyielding, plus 5 from the legendary luck, plus 2 from the shielded vault under armor, will bring us to 33 luck, which is very important for you to make note of. Unfortunately, this will make us have one unusable perk point, but it is worth it and means we don't have to sacrifice any other parts of the build. We can have it all. So now I'm going to show you the perks of this build. Choosing the correct perks are the most important part of any build. If you run the wrong perks, then you're setting yourself up for failure. 
And if you're watching my builds, you know my one and only goal is to be the most cunningly, brutally and effective in-class build each and every single time. And the Enforcer is no different. Firstly, I'm going to be showing you the default version of this build, which is the tank, and then I'll show you the stealth version in the alternative perks section of the video. Let's get into it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with the perks. As you can see right here, we have the Enforcer slash T, which is obviously the tank variation. Then we have Enforcer slash S, which is going to be the stealth option. I'll show that off later on in the video. But for now, let's look at the main default version of the build, the Enforcer tank version. So here is the Enforcer shotgun bloodied build. Take a screenshot right now if you want to use it for later reference, or go down in the description and use the Nukes and Dragons website for your perk cards. Anyways, let's kick it off here. Obviously, we're going to be taking all ranks of the shotgunner. This is going to give us 60% extra damage with our shotguns. We can't pass this up. Our goal is damage. We're going to be taking this. From there, we're going to be taking Scattershot. This is going to be actually pretty massive for us. It's going to reduce the weight of all our shotguns by 90%, and we're going to reload them 30% faster. Now, this is huge because our shotguns actually weigh quite a bit by default. So with this perk, it will bring that weight down to like one pound or maybe even three pounds if we're pushing it with a heavy shotgun. Hell, even if you decide to carry around a pepper shaker, that will only weigh one pound with this perk, which is brilliant. And having us reload 30% faster is going to be very useful for our DPS, especially if we're using something like the pump action or the double barrel shotgun. And then lastly, for strength, we're going to be taking max rank of blocker. This will make us take 45% less damage from your opponent's melee attacks. Very useful for a tank, as this is the tank variation of the Enforcer build. With this perk on, with all of our other defenses, which I'll get to later on in the video, we will be just brushing off attacks from melee opponents like they're nothing. Basically, with this perk on, a strike from a Deathclaw will feel like you're getting hit with a balloon animal. It's absolutely ridiculous, and I highly recommend picking this up for any tank-focused build. From there, we're going to go to Perception. We only need max rank of Concentrated Fire here, since we are utilizing our shotguns in VATS mainly for both variations of this build, having Concentrated Fire for the little bit of bonus damage when we get to that third shot, and that insane boost to accuracy. With Concentrated Fire at max rank, every time we pull the trigger and fire in VATS, it will increase our percent chance to hit by 20%, which is massive. If you miss the first three shots, then you're guaranteed to hit the fourth one, and the fifth one, and the sixth one. You just won't miss from then on. But since we are using a shotgun, you should only be using vats with the shotguns, or shotguns in general, at very close range to your enemies. So basically you're guaranteed to hit them, just aim for the head in vats and get that bonus damage. Now two little things here that I need to touch on before we move on. We will not be taking bandolier because we only are using shotguns, and... That's one ammo type. We only use shotgun shells or prime shotgun shells depending on if you can afford to use those. And shotgun shells don't weigh that much. You can carry around 3,000 shotgun shells very comfortably and it will only weigh 15 or 17 pounds. That's not worth wasting two points over, especially since that would mean we would have to sacrifice blocker or scatter shot. So I've decided that we can afford to miss out on bandolier for this build since, like I said, Having 2,000-3,000 rounds of shotgun shells will only weigh something like 15 pounds. Not worth it in my opinion for this build at least. And in Perception, we don't need Skeet Shooter. I don't even have it down here in the Perception thing because it's not worth it for this build. We're using VATS and Skeet Shooter only applies for outside of VATS. The Skeet Shooter perk makes you more accurate when you're aiming down sights when you're free aiming without VATS. So, if we're not going to be utilizing free aim, if we're prioritizing our VATS gameplay, then there's no point in us investing three points into something that we're not going to get use out of. So yeah, I hope that little explanation will avoid me getting any comments asking where those perks are. Okay, from there in Endurance, we're going to be taking max rank of Fireproof. This is very useful for this build in particular. If we're going to be using explosive shotguns, which I recommend to get the most bang for your buck, literally, <laughs> Fireproof will make us take 45% less damage from explosions and flame attacks. So pretty much without this perk, we would be killing ourselves with our explosive shotguns, but since we have it, we do pretty much no damage at all to ourselves and other enemies that do deal explosive damage like Scorch Beasts, Sentry Bots, or any Raiders that carry missile launchers. They will do nothing to us and we can just brush off those explosions like they're nothing. You know me, I never make a build without Fireproof. It's so useful just for the Scorch Beast Sonic Breath defense alone. And then from there, we're going to be taking max rank of Rejuvenated. Now really, I put these two extra points in here to bolster our Endurance to give us a little bit more health, and Rejuvenated will help with that a little bit as well, since this is the tank portion of the build. So while we are fully fed, we will get plus one to our Endurance, and we will get an extra 45 hit points. From there, we will also get plus one to our Strength, and we will also get 45% faster AP regen. Now, since we're a tank, 
and we are utilizing VATs. Both of those things apply to us. We get extra HP for tanking, and we get faster AP regeneration to synergize with our VATs usage. Now you're more than welcome to swap this out for something like Max Rank of Revenant or anything else that you might deem worthy, but for me, I've chosen Rejuvenated. Moving on to Charisma, we have the classic combo that I never go without in the Charisma tree. We have Rank 1 of Strange in Numbers. This will mean that all of our mutations will be 25% stronger if we are on a team. This is insanely useful, it's going to increase the effectiveness of a lot of the mutations that I will show later on in the video. Basically, it's just going to increase our damage, increase our survivability, and bolster a few quality of life features that we will have due to mutations. And then we have Tenderizer. Now this will make our targets receive 10% more damage for 10 seconds after you attack. However, this perk works a little bit funny with multi-pallet weapons, which shotguns are. Basically, the Tenderizer perk can stack up to 4 times from a single person, per shot for a limited amount of time. I'm not sure if this is a bug. The data miners have explained to me that this is an intended feature that has always been here since the start of the game. No one just really knew about it. But now we do and they have explained that it's supposed to be here so I'm just going to roll with that. Basically when you use Tenderizer with a shotgun or any multi palleted weapon, if 4 of your pallets hit the target then you're basically making them receive 40% more damage for 10 seconds which is just a brilliant little synergy. I, I don't know why it works, like I said, but it works that way, which is fucking awesome. Basically, just shoot something once in VATS, all of your pellets are going to hit, they're going to be taking 40% more damage from you and all other sources, meaning your teammates will be dealing 40% more damage as well, and all of it's multiplicative, so that's just brilliant. Extra damage is extra damage. And then in Intelligence, we have Nerd Rage. Now, this is the staple for all bloody builds. It's one of the most important perks, if not the most important perk, while we are below 20% health, we gain 40 damage resistance, 20% extra damage, and 15% faster AP regeneration. All of that synergizes brilliantly with our goal here. More damage resistance when we're lower health, we are a tank. More damage, we want to deal damage. Faster AP regeneration, that works brilliantly with our VAT sustain. Like I always say, if you're a bloody build and you're not using Nerd Rage, you're doing it fucking wrong. And from there, we have max rank of Demolition Expert. Like I said, we're going to be using explosive shotguns with the explosive legendary effect. So with that, this will basically make our explosive pellets do 60% more damage. And that's just way, way more bang for our buck. We're going to be doing a lot more damage with this on, trust me. But having said that, you may not be like me. You may not want to use explosive shotguns, and that's completely fine. You can use other options, which I'll get to in the weapon section of the video. So if explosive shotguns are not your cup of tea as well, then you can take away the Demolition Expert perk and put those 5 points wherever you see fit. Maybe you do want to put them into Perception for Skeet Shooter, maybe you want to put them in Endurance for something else. I don't know, it's all up to you. But for me, I'm using this particular build and this particular setup to get the most damage I possibly can with my bloodied explosive shotguns. And then moving on over to Agility, we're going to be taking max rank of Action Boy. This is going to increase our action point regen by 45%, which is massive. This will stack right on top of all of our other effects that will be also boosting our AP regen. This perk is basically just amazing to cap off our AP regen and make it that much more potent. With this and other effects like it, we will always be in VATS, our AP will always be regenerating. It will be going from 0% to 100% in an instant. Next up, we will be taking max rank of Enforcer. This is amazing for our build for a lot of reasons. Mainly, it gives us the option to be more utilitarian with our playstyle. We can be more of a support character if we choose to, because every single shot we shoot is basically guaranteed to stagger an enemy or cripple some part of their limb. What this card does is gives us a 15% chance to stagger and a 30% chance to cripple a limb, and that is per pallet. Shotguns fire 8 pallets, so if all 8 of our pallets hit the target, then that is a guaranteed 120% chance to stagger. And if all of our pallets somehow hit the same limb, then that's a guaranteed 240% chance to cripple that limb. But what is more likely to happen will be our pallets will get spread out and hit different parts of the target and have a 30% chance to cripple different limbs that it hits. And a neat little caveat with this build is that it does synergize with the explosive legendary effect on our shotguns. Because the explosive pallets count as their own little hits, so each explosive pallet also has a 15% chance to stagger and a 30% chance to cripple a limb. So you can just spray the ground of a target and let the explosive pellets hit the feet area of an enemy and do their AoE damage and will most likely cripple the enemy before they even get a chance to react. Or you can just VATS target the enemy and you'll have a 240% chance to stagger due to the 8 pellets and the explosive pellets as well. On top of that, if you just target the same limb, you're basically guaranteed to cripple anything because you will have a massive 480% chance to cripple a limb. 
It's guaranteed you're going to be crippling stuff and you're going to be staggering stuff with this perk, especially if you use an explosive shotgun. So on top of our ability to deal mass amounts of damage, we can also be a support character and just make sure all of the adds or the bosses are crippled and staggered and not moving. It's amazing to use and I highly recommend you put this in your shotgun build. Next up is Gunfu. Now I highly recommend only taking rank 1 of this perk because we're only really taking it to get that VATS swap ability. Basically while we have this perk active and we kill something in VATS, then we will automatically lock on to the next target if it is within range. Now I don't recommend you take rank 2 or even rank 3 of this because we won't really ever see that extra 20% and extra 30% damage with this build, mainly because I have fleshed out the rest of our agility points with some other perks that I found more useful. And you've got to keep in mind that we are a shotgun build, we have to be up close and personal with our targets, we have to be right in their face to shoot them in VATS. So yeah, like I said, I highly recommend just taking rank 1 for the VATS swap ability, and that 10% extra damage is really nice to tack onto the build. From there we will be taking max rank of Adrenaline. Now this is why I didn't take max rank of Gun Fu, because this one is more active all the time, it's not locked into a certain situation, we don't have to be in VATS, making sure we are VATS swapping from one target to the next, we can just have this right here, and get kills, and have that extra 60% damage active at all times, at least until it runs out. Basically what this perk does is what it says, you gain 10% extra damage for every kill you get, maxing out at 60%, and this will last for 30 seconds, and each kill you get will refresh the duration. I highly recommend getting this perk if you're a damage focused build, especially if you're using shotguns because you will be killing enemies left, right, and fucking center. Then next up we have Dodgy. We are a tank, we're going to be taking Dodgy. This will make us avoid 30% of incoming damage at the cost of 30 action points per hit. And there is a little timer in between hits, so it's not too bad for reduction of AP. The AP we do lose when we get hit with this perk on won't really matter that much because we have such high AP regen, it just comes back in an instant, since the perk does have that built-in timer. Now because this is the tank variation of the Enforcer build, we're going to be taking Dodgy, this will make us way, way more tankier, and will benefit us greatly. We can just run straight up to the enemies, VATS target their face, and blast it full of lead, leaving them to be a bloody pulp. And then we will move on to Luck. We're going to be taking max rank of bloody mess, this will give us 15% bonus damage. You might as well take it, we need every little bit of damage we can get, especially since we are using shotguns. We want to be hitting high damage numbers, so this is why we're taking it. And then next up, we're going to be taking max rank of better criticals. This will make our VATS criticals do 40% extra damage, which is absolutely massive. This will synergize so well with our build, because we have a lot of other things that are also boosting our critical hits, and our critical hit damage. So since we will be able to pop off a critical shot every second shot in VATS, this will mean that all of our critical shots will be doing mass amounts of damage with this perk on. From there, we will be taking max rank of Serendipity. While we are below 30% health, we gain a 45% chance to avoid all incoming damage. This is perfect for our build. We're going to be a tank, we're going to be right in the face of our enemies, and we're going to be getting hit, we're going to be getting smacked. So having a 45% chance to just not take any damage is massive. If you have a bloody build, you should be using Serendipity, there's absolutely no reason not to, especially if you are some sort of tank. This perk is just a beautiful cherry on top for the whole build. From there we will be taking max rank of starch genes, this is needed in all of the builds you will ever make, you need it so that you have your chosen mutations, it will make it so you never accidentally mutate when you take radiation, and it will make it so you never accidentally lose your chosen mutations when you take right away. Next up we will have max rank of critical savvy. This will make it so our critical hits only consume 55% of our critical meter. This is the golden ticket. This is the main reason we are able to hit a critical shot every second shot in VATS. This in combination with our 33 luck is the reason we can pop off a critical shot every second shot in VATS. Criticals in general do massive amounts of extra damage and they are guaranteed to hit your target in VATS. And that is extra potent with shotguns, because a critical hit with a shotgun will mean that you are guaranteed to hit all 8 of your pallets on the target that you are aiming at. And it will mean all 8 of your pallets will deal that critical damage. I'm not sure if it's bugged or if it's just the way they work in this game, but critical hits with shotguns do some massive amounts of damage. So it's important that you have 33 luck in combination with this perk, and it's also important that you have a bunch of synergization within your build to make you deal the most amount of critical damage as you possibly can. Which is what I've done here with the Enforcer build, so I hope you enjoy it. And finally, we have one point of luck to utilize, and we're going to fill that up with rank 1 of Grim Reaper's Sprint. Now I would like to have this maxed out, but unfortunately there is not room. 
all of the other perks are just a little bit higher on our priority list, so we're going to be taking rank 1 of Grim Reaper's Sprint. This means that any kill we get in VATS will have a 15% chance to restore all of our action points. Which is actually pretty massive. Every time you kill something, there's a 15% chance that all your AP will come back in an instant. This just means that our AP sustain and our AP regeneration is going to be off the charts again and again and again. I highly recommend filling up your last point in luck with this perk. So there you have it, those are the perks for this build. And like I said earlier, if you follow it to the letter, you'll be unstoppable. But now, I know you legends like to have options, so I will give you options. Welcome to the alternative perks section of the build video. Now let's start off with the smaller stuff. First off, you can totally take 2 points out of Endurance and get rid of Rejuvenated, then put those 2 perk points into Perception for max rank of Grenadier. I would only suggest doing this if your main weapon for this build is going to be the Gauss Shotgun. This is mainly because there appears to be a bug that allows the Gauss Shotgun Explosion Pellets to properly do damage while in VATS while targeting the head if you have Grenadier equipped. So, if you want to use the Gauss Shotgun, use Grenadier with it, you'll be doing a lot more damage in VATS. Then from there, in Strength, you can slot in Bandolier and Rank 1 of Scattershot instead of Max Rank of Scattershot if you wish to. However, as I explained earlier, that shouldn't be needed. In Charisma, we can swap out Stranger Numbers and Tenderizer for Lone Wanderer, depending on if we are on a team or if a solo. Then in Intelligence, depending on whether or not you use a shotgun with the explosive legendary effect, you can let go of Demolition Expert and utilize those 5 points elsewhere in the build. Maybe you can use those 5 points in Agility or Luck if you haven't fully maxed out a legendary special card yet. Again, the choice is yours depending on your situation and needs. Like I said for myself, I do have explosive shotguns as they do deliver the most per shot damage so I will be boosting that further with Demolition Expert because the goal of this build is to deal the most damage possible. And adding on to that, it is also important to remember that the Gauss shotgun is also boosted by Demolition Expert because it does have a native explosive effect. So if you are maining a Gauss shotgun with this build, you're most likely going to want to keep Demolition Expert rank 5 equipped. Now, with that easy stuff all out of the way, let's talk about the stealth variation of this build. Here, we will be making a few small tweaks to change the build's playstyle drastically. We will go from a tank type character to a stealthy, silent shotgun wielding assassin. We will start off by taking Dodgy, Gunfu, and Action Boy out, so that we can then swap in and replace them for Sneak, Escape Artist, and Covert Operative, to completely change us into a stealth character. And then to go a step further, you can come into strength and lower it by 3 points, getting rid of blocker. And with those 3 points, we will take 1 into endurance, so that we can equip radical, and then 2 into charisma, so that we can equip field surgeon. Radical will be useful for our build to increase our carry capacity, and the field surgeon perk will make our stim packs heal us at a much faster rate if we do get detected while we are stealthing. This way, the field surgeon perk will act as a kind of, oh shit, get me the fuck out of here button. Like I said, just in case you do get detected, you'll heal much faster with Field Surgeon. And then from there, we will move into Luck to take out Serendipity and swap in Max Rank of Quick Hands. Since we will be stealthing, we won't need the Blocker perk and we won't need Serendipity since we shouldn't be detected to get hit anyway, so I thought that all of this would be a much more useful card loadout for a stealth shotgunner. So yeah, that's pretty much it. A simple 6 card swap will turn you from a tank to a stealth character, so enjoy the duality of this build. And finally, on the subject of perks, let's get into the legendary perks and talk about which ones we have chosen for this build. Alright, so here we are, we are on the topic of legendary perks, I'm going to go through each one of these and explain why I have picked them. Firstly, we've got Far Flung Fireworks. At max rank, this will give us a 20% chance to make enemies explode, dealing a massive amount of damage to all enemies in the vicinity of the enemy we just killed. Essentially, this is a chance-based AoE attack that we can utilize on groups of enemies. Interestingly enough, the damage from this thing can be boosted by Demolition Expert, that is something that I've tested and confirmed in a different video that I will be releasing very soon. Now I understand that a lot of people don't like to use this because it flings bodies everywhere makes it harder to loot shit. Just get over that sort of mentality, you'll find the body eventually. If you want to deal damage, put this on, or if you don't want to use it for any other types of reasons, or maybe you just really find it hard to find bodies, then feel free to slot in something else instead of this. However, like I said, I'm in the business of dealing damage, and this is just another way that I can potentially deal more damage. From there, we have follow-through. 
Luckily, I've been able to max this out since the devastating loss of Nuclear Winter. We've been given a lot of perk coins and I've finally been able to max this out. So this will give us a huge multiplicative damage increase. This only works for ranged weapons. Basically, if we sneak, shoot something and then wait one to two seconds, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to kick in, we will do 40% more multiplicative sneak damage to the enemy, which is massive. It's a lot. This paired with Covert Operative is a big, big damage dealer. And since we are using a shotgun, we've got a multi palleted weapon, we need all the damage boosts we can get, since our damage is split evenly between the 8 pallets. From there we have Funky Duds, this is just a little bit of a flex spot, you don't really need this, but I found that most bloody builds usually die to poison damage, that is the one thing that we usually die to, or at least that I usually die to, I just never pay attention when I get hit with a damage over time effect from a Mirelurk, a Stingwing, or a Cricket. All those damage over time poison dealing enemies just seem to catch me off guard, and this perk here really helps to combat that. You really only need rank 1, if you rank it up any further you'll basically take zero damage from poison. So this is just a personal choice for me, I like Funky Duds on most of my bloody builds because like I said, it helps me to not die from the one thing that happens to get me. However in your case, feel free to choose whatever you want in place of Funky Duds. Next up we have taking one for the team. Now since this is a bit of a duality build, we are sometimes a tank depending on what we pick with the perk loadout machine as I showed earlier, and we are sometimes a stealth build. Personally, I prefer the stealth version because it lets me deal a lot more damage and I don't have to worry about defending myself, but being a tank is perfectly viable as you no doubt saw throughout the footage in this video. Unfortunately, I have not been able to rank this up all the way, but if I did, I would be dealing 40% more multiplicative damage to enemies that do attack me, which is tremendously valuable if you are the tank of the build, if you are in enemies' faces, which we will be when we're using shotguns. We have to get right up into the enemy's faces, they will most likely attack us when we're acting as the tank, and when they do attack us, we deal 40% more multiplicative damage to them. It's just another great way to deal damage if you don't want to be a stealth character, you don't have to be shoehorned and limited to being a stealth character to deal large amounts of damage. You can take this perk, rank it up to maximum, let the enemies smack you in the face or shoot you while you're on a team, and then you can deal out a large amount of damage right back. Now, I've got both of these for another reason as well as the duality of this build, mainly because there's not really any legendary perks that are specific to a shotgun build. Unfortunately, the devs haven't released any new legendary perks, and you can see down there I've got 200 perk coins just in case they do one day release new legendary perks. Hopefully something for a shotgun build will come out in the future, but I doubt it, so until then, I'm just going to rock both of these and see how that treats me, and so far it's been doing pretty well. And now let's talk about Legendary Agility. I've got this so that I can have 5 more usable perk points in my regular perk skill tree. Having this means I don't have to sacrifice my perk points anywhere else in the build, and it allows me to fully choose between that sneak and tank lifestyle. As you can see here, those 5 perk points from Agility contribute to my main 5 points down here in Agility. It allows me to either use Action Boy, Gun Fu, and Dodgy, or Covert Ops, Escape Artist, and Sneak. Now yes, all of that is worth 6 points, not 5, but I wouldn't have the opportunity to even do that if I didn't have Legendary Agility. So yeah, Legendary Agility is very important to this build if you build it the way I have. You definitely need it to get the most bang for your buck. You need it to get those extra perk cards so that you can either be a stealth build or a tank build, or maybe you need it for something else that you have prioritised. You definitely need those 5 extra perk points. And then we have Legendary Luck. Now I've used this in the same way that I've used it for my commando build. This is basically so that we can get a critical shot every second shot. I'm looking at this perk and pretending that the description reads, you now can use a critical shot every second shot in VATS, because that's what it allows me to do. And that's a massive benefit to have on a build that is using VATS. So I think fully maxing out Legendary Luck the way I have done it, the way I have explained in this video, is well worth the investment because, like I said, Shooting a critical every second shot is so, so powerful. So there we go, there we have it. Those are the legendary perk cards I have chosen for this build and the reasons I have given for using them. I hope you all at least somewhat agree with me or at the very least, give it a go for yourself and see how it works out for you. Anyways, let's move on to the mutations that the Enforcer will be using. It's important to pick the right mutations and only use the ones that actually pertain to our build. You'll notice I didn't waste 3 points on Class Freak because that perk is absolutely fucking useless. We can spend those 3 perk points better elsewhere, and most importantly, the negatives we get from our chosen mutations don't actually matter to this build. 
and I'll say the same thing every build video I make. Oh, and keep in mind that, thanks to Stranger Numbers, our mutations will be 25% stronger when we are on a team. Let's get into it. So firstly, we have Adrenal Reaction. Obviously, we will be using this because we are a bloody build. This is a perfect synergization for us. This mutation will make our stim packs more beneficial at low health and increase our damage up to 50% when our health decreases. Then next, we have Bird Bones, which will be particularly useful for us because of the four extra agility it grants. This will allow us to use vats longer and sneak more effectively. Oh yeah, and we also have the added bonus of a slower fall speed. Next we have Chameleon, because honestly, it's a dud mutation. It does nothing and has no negative, so if we ever do decide to strip down into our tidy whities then we will be invisible. Doesn't really do anything until we get naked. Being naked is the negative for this mutation. Anyway, next we have Eagle Eyes, which will grant us a 4 to Perception, to make us a little bit more accurate in vats. And on top of that, it also grants us a 25% extra VATS critical damage boost, which is amazing. This is a beautiful little synergy here for our build. Then next we have Grounded. We have absolutely no reason not to use this, as there are no shotguns in the game that utilize the energy damage formula. Not even the Gauss shotgun will be affected by the negative of this mutation. So that means that this is just a free 100 energy resistance for us with no downside. Brilliant. Next we have Herbivore. Now, usually I would suggest Carnivore because of the convenience factor, but as I'll explain in the buff section of this video, we will want to get the Herbivore mutation to increase our critical damage further with Blight Soup and other food items. Especially since we use a critical every second shot, it's important that we make the most of it. Then next up we have the tried and true favourite of virtually every player in the game, the Speed Demon mutation and the Marsupial mutation. With this we can jump incredibly high, hold 20 more pounds of carry weight thanks to the marsupial mutation and we can also run at maximum movement speed and reload 20% faster thanks to the speed demon mutation. What's not to love about them too? Okay, so these are my chosen mutations for the build. All of the negatives to strength don't bloody matter and are counteracted by our unyielding and natural high strength stat anyway. Also, the negative to HP doesn't matter, and neither does the negative energy gun damage, so we really have no need to be a silly bastard and waste 3 points on Class Freak. It's useless. But by all means, if you want to utilize more mutations and anything else that I haven't listed here, then go for it. This is just what I recommend after all. You may like different perks that I haven't suggested here, and if you do want to use them, feel free to. Like I said, this is just what I recommend. Next up is weapons. Obviously we will be using shotguns in whatever form you prefer. I myself choose to mainly use the combat shotgun due to it being one of the few shotguns that allow me to slot in an armor penetration magazine. Now armor penetration is extremely important in this game and unfortunately shotguns don't have a perk that grants us armor penetration just yet. Let's hope that changes in the future. But anyway, on top of this armor penetration magazine, the combat shotgun also fires the fastest and has the most rounds in the magazine. It has a very quick reload speed as well as a very high base damage stat, and it is easily acquired. And on top of all of that, you can put a silencer on the combat shotgun, meaning you can use it in stealth. It's a very good all-rounded weapon. With that being said though, I do also on occasion use the pump action shotgun, gauss shotguns and double barrel shotguns. However, I simply just prefer the combat shotgun over all of the other options. Now you can feel free to use whatever shotgun you wish for your version of the Enforcer build. Hell! Use a Pepper Shaker if you want to. Just know I do have a dedicated build specifically for the Pepper Shaker, which you can find right here. Now, as for legendary effects, clearly we will be chasing the bloodied prefix on all of our shotguns. This is, after all, a bloodied build, so getting bloodied will pair nicely for us for obvious reasons, allowing us to deal up to 95% more damage the lower our health gets. From there, ideally, we will aim for the Explosive Bullet's secondary effect. This will make us do 3% of the weapon's base damage as explosive damage per projectile, totaling 24% extra explosive damage if all 8 of our pellets hit the target. Which may not sound like much, but it has proven to be very deadly. Now you can aim for the explosive effect, or you can aim for the 50% extra VATS critical damage effect. This will clearly benefit our VATS centric playstyle more, and would possibly offer more damage overall if you are constantly critting every second shot. However, Tear-like make things go boom. Anyway, 
From there, for the third star, we will ideally either aim for the 25% less VATS cost effect, or the 15% faster reload effect, depending on what shotgun you have, or depending on whatever you prefer. And before moving on, I would also like to mention some viable backup legendary attributes to have on your backup shotguns. Firstly, anti-armor. Obviously, this will be the go-to prefix to use if you're fighting bosses like the Queen or Earl Williams. That 50% armor penetration effect will be of great use in those situations and will out-damage bloodied any day of the week when it is against bosses. However, against your standard run-of-the-mill enemies, you're far better off using bloodied, for things like super mutants, regular scorched beasts, ghouls, robots, anything like that. Basically, I'm giving the same advice I always give. Use bloodied for your everyday activities and use anti-armor for the bosses, and that will definitely benefit you. Now additionally, in terms of survivability, you can become literally immortal if you make use of a vampire's shotgun. Because the vampire's effect heals you 2% of your total health per pellet that lands. This means if all 8 pellets land, you'll heal 16% of your health per shot, which is amazing. But it gets better. If you also have an explosive effect on your vampire's shotgun, then you will heal yourself 32% of your health per shot, because each explosive pellet counts as its own damage tick, that will also heal you 2%. So yeah, if you want to deal damage all round, go bloodied. If you want to deal damage against bosses, go anti-armor. And if you want to be an immortal agent of death, go vampires. And then finally, for the topic of weapons, let's talk about modifications. Honestly, it isn't too dissimilar to a rifle. We will want to either have a prime or hardened receiver, depending on your flux situation. If you can spare the flux, go prime. You'll do more damage and you'll be able to craft larger quantities of ammo. From there, we will want to go with a reflex sight for less AP cost, and then an aligned barrel for the same reason, and then ideally a forceful stock to increase our weapon's condition bar and further decrease AP cost. Then, if your shotgun gives you the option, pop on a magazine mod that gives you armor penetration. You'll need all the armor pen you can get in this game, especially with shotguns. Ideally, we will want to put on the perforating magazine, which will give you the most bang for your buck in terms of armor pen. And then finally, for the muzzle, if you're going quiet and stealth-like, pop on a suppressor. And that's it for the weapons. Friendly reminder that you don't need god rolls like I have, we all have to start somewhere after all. And I promise, you will be fine if you use a crummy one-star bloodied combat shotgun, as long as you have the right perks on. So just be patient and use whatever you can until you get your god roll either through trades or pure luck. Okay, and now let's move on to the topic of armor. Honestly, the legendary effects here are more important than the actual armor top itself, but I'll touch on that soon. Ideally, obviously, we will want to be aiming for a full set of Secret Service armor or Brotherhood Recon armor, whatever you can get your hands on easier. If you can't get either of those, then the next best thing will be Heavy Combat Armor. For the simple reason being, Combat Armor is the most well-balanced protection you can find in this game. So, just pick your armor, whatever it may be. Anyway, with that all said, ideally for this build, you will need a full set of armor with the Unyielding Prefix. The Unyielding Prefix is what makes this whole build work and is a major factor in letting us crit every second shot, which is huge. Basically, the key to having a successful low health bloody build is unyielding, so make sure that is a priority. Then for the second star, we will ideally be aiming for a full set of sentinels. This will give us a 75% chance to reduce incoming damage by 75% while we are standing still and not moving. And we will be doing this more often than you think. Basically, sentinels will be tremendously helpful for our survivability. And if you want, on top of this, you can make it so that one of your armor pieces has the harder to detect while sneaking legendary effect for when you do choose to sneak on this build. And then for the third star, you'll want to be aiming for the faster AP refresh speed legendary effect. This will overclock our VATS AP sustain, ensuring we are always ready for a fight and ready to load our enemies with a belly full of buckshot. So yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to armor and armor legendary effects. Unyielding, Sentinel, and AP Refresh is the goal, and ideally we want that on Secret Service Armor or Brotherhood Recon Armor. Then, as for the Under Armor, we will be taking a different approach here. We actually will be using Shielded Vault Under Armor for a few reasons. It gives us a small boost to Strength and Intelligence, which doesn't really matter to us for this build, but it is nice to have nonetheless. The real benefit here is the plus 2 to Endurance for the extra health, and the plus 2 to Luck to push us up to 33 Luck granting us the ability to crit every second shot. 
Now as I explained at the start of the video and in the legendary perk section of the video, this is important. We will not be using shielded Raider Under Armour for this build simply because we don't need its bonuses and we actually required an extra perk point from Luck to make full use of our perk cards. It's as simple as that. Normally I would suggest just to use the shielded Raider Under Armour for the plus one to Luck and I would have used my base Luck a little bit differently but like I said, we needed one point from luck into endurance to make this build work. So the plus two to luck from the shielded vault under armor really brings this whole thing full circle and completes the build for us and ensures we don't have to make any sacrifices anywhere else in the build. Moving on from there, as for backpacks, I prefer to use the chemist backpack to reduce the weight of my chems by 90%. I find this one to be very useful in keeping my weight managed on this build since I do carry a lot of chems. However, if you want to use a high capacity, you're more than welcome to. If you're not interested in keeping your weight managed, if you've already got that under control, then you can choose to be slightly more tanky. And use the armor-plated backpack. You honestly can't go wrong with that choice either. Getting the armor-plated backpack is great. It gives you 90 damage resistance, just giving you a little bit more tank. And then finally, for the armor section of the video, let's talk quickly about armor mods. It's very simple for the armor side of things. Go with whatever gives you the highest defense which would be the Brotherhood of Steel lining if you are using combat armor, or the Betrest lining if you're using Secret Service armor. As for the miscellaneous mods, we will want to chuck in every single limb with the Ultralight mod. This will reduce the weight of our armor, which is nice, but mainly we want to use this for the extra AP that it grants us. This will grant us 5 AP per limb that we put it on, which will give us a big bonus. And then for the torso, you can either slot in Dents if you're fighting the Queen, or asbestos lining if you're fighting Earl Williams, or a jetpack if you're a fucking legend and just want to fly around like a loose goose. Now as I said in the weapons section, god rolls are not a requirement for this build. You'll do just fine with even one star unyielding armor, as the priority here is to ensure that you do get that full set of unyielding armor first before anything else. Because all of the extra stuff is not really necessary, the sentinels and the AP refresh, it's not necessary, unless you do want to be the most efficient you possibly can be then it will really make you shine if you do get that full set. Now let's talk about the limited time buffs that you can farm and apply to your character and when the situation will call for these buffs. All of the buffs I'm going to list here are what you can take to give yourself the most combat effectiveness possible. Now in my opinion, you won't need to use any of these buffs in your day-to-day -day gameplay. There are no regular enemies in the game that will require you to buff your damage to put them down quick. So the only time I recommend that you use any or all of these buffs is during a boss fight. Be that at the Scorch Beast Queen, Earl Williams, or any new bosses that come out in the future. Anyway, here is the complete list. Feel free to screenshot it for later reference if you want to. Firstly, we have our long lasting buffs. The small guns bobblehead will increase our shotgun damage by 20% for one hour. And then we have the Guns and Bullet 3 magazine, which will increase our VAT's critical damage for 30 minutes. Now both of these will be a massive boost to your shotgun's damage. And as there are no energy shotguns out there, at least not at the time of making this video, we will have no need for any of the energy bobblehead or energy magazines. Then for the food buffs, we have Blight Soup, the tried and true favorite of the community, Blight Soup. This will make your VAT's criticals do 20% more damage by default, or they will be giving you 40% more powerful VATS criticals if you have herbivore, which is honestly massive. I highly recommend farming and using Blight Soup periodically throughout your gameplay, since it is a massive and easy to acquire damage boost. And then on top of that, if you want to have more AP regen, then you can use things like corn soup, sunshine oil, canned coffee, or company tea. Just basically use them at your own leisure, and your AP will be regenerating much faster. Now as for alcohol, we only need to worry about Ballistic Bock. This is the only one that will actually affect all the shotguns that are in the game currently. As I said before, there are no energy shotguns in the game. Not even the Gauss shotgun actually counts as an energy shotgun. So high voltage Hefe will not affect any of our shotguns. Now Ballistic Bock will grant us 15% extra weapon damage, which is really nice. And then finally for chems, we have Overdrive, which will grant us 15% extra damage and 15% VATS critical damage on top of everything else. And then we have Psychotats for an extra 25% damage on top of it all. And you must remember, it's important to pop Overdrive first and then Psychotats secondly so that you can make them stack. Now as I said at the start, these buff options are the best in-slot options for this build. If you take only a few of these items, you'll increase your shotgun's power immensely. But if you take them all, you'll be an absolute beast. 
you may even have a shot at taking down Earl Williams in under a minute. And again, I recommend that you only pop these buffs if you plan on killing a boss in a timely manner. Now, as for daily ops, you will be more than okay in whatever game mode that is active. Be that the decryption game mode or the uplink game mode. If you have to sneak or tank based on the game mode, then just go over to the loadout machine and switch to your tank or stealth variant of the enforcer build. Now, once you're in there in the daily op, just do the objectives and support your teammates. And try to cripple a few enemies if you can, since you have a massive 30% chance to cripple an enemy's limb per pallet, we should make full use of that here in daily ops. However, if you don't really care about strategy or support, then you're more than welcome to just outright kill enemies left, right, and fucking center, and run around the daily op arena like a madman. Vats shotting and Vats critical hitting the enemies right in the head with some Doom OS music in the background. Honestly, whatever you choose to do in daily ops, you'll be fine. Now moving on to the strategy of boss fights, now this is where things get a little bit more complex. We are the Enforcer, and we are using a shotgun. It doesn't take a genius to take one look at the background footage and realize our damage is not the greatest against boss enemies. This is mainly because our weapon's pit boy damage is evenly divided amongst our eight pallets. That's just how these shotguns work. That's how this game treats shotguns and multi-palleted weapons. But it doesn't stop there. Once each pallet hits the enemy, then each pallet's damage is reduced individually by the boss's damage negation and armor stats. Unfortunately, just due to the lack of armor penetration perks that we have for shotguns, and because of the way multi-palleted weapons function against armored targets by default, we will not be a top damage dealer by any means. Sure, you can dish out decent and respectable damage numbers, upwards of 40 damage per pallet, or maybe even upwards of 150 damage per pallet if you're using all of the buffs and using critical shots. But the truth is, this damage will be outpaced by almost all of the other builds in the game when it comes to boss fighting. So that leaves us in a little bit of a dilemma. We can either mush on and just continue dealing what damage we can, or we can play to our build's strengths and enforce the boss to remain stagnant and crippled. You see, if you are VATS aiming at a specific limb, then you will have a guaranteed 240% chance to cripple the limb that you are aiming at. So it is my highest recommendation that if you are using this build at a boss battle in a public server, you should ensure that you are the one to cripple the Scorch Beast's wings and enforce her to land. And when it comes to the Wendigo Colossus, you should cripple Earl's legs and keep him immobile. You should cripple every part of the boss's body and then ensure that it stays that way. Now bosses will slowly heal their crippled limbs over time and will also heal them instantly once they get to that half health and mutate. So as the enforcer, as the shotgun build, it's important that you keep on fanning the hammer and enforcing these bosses to our whim. And that's basically that. Sure, you can pop all of your buffs and do as much damage as you can muster with a shotgun, but you should also be playing this role as a support build and cripple the bosses at every opportunity you get. And that's just the way I see it. Sure, you can do heaps of damage to a boss if you do the right things, get your criticals off, and use the right buffs. But like I said, the vast majority of people that I'm guessing are watching this video don't have the ability to do that. They don't have the god roll armor, they don't have the god roll weapons, and they don't have the ability to farm all of these buffs necessary to take out a boss in under a minute with a combat shotgun like myself and Femos. So that's why I'm recommending, for the vast majority of you, play to your strengths. Put on that Enforcer perk card, use VATS, and aim at the boss's weak spots to cripple what needs to be crippled. With that all said, let's move on to the topic of mobbing. We will be more than okay in this department. We can safely one-shot most trash mobs like ghouls, super mutants, and myelurks with a single VATS headshot. And we can do that both stealthed and unstealthed, whatever way you prefer to play this build. It's my strongest recommendation that you just pretend you're the Doom Slayer pump some heavy metal music, and rip and fucking tear all of the mobs in your way. Those enemies you face that don't get one-shotted will just be crippled and embarrassed for attempting to take you on. So do them a favor and put a second load of buckshot in their head. And that's it ladies and gentlemen. This has been the Enforcer Bloodied Shotgun build. It has fantastic mob control capabilities, fantastic boss support potential, and has the duality to effectively sneak or tank depending on your needs or preference. Now, a reminder for all of you watching that the goal for this build was to deal as much damage we possibly can with a shotgun build and to hyper-optimize it for certain situations. Now, if you are building this for yourself, I strongly encourage you to return to this video if you need any help or a refresher on any of the information via the timestamps in the description. 
Also, if you want to look at it, the link to the written version of the build will be in the description via the Nukes and Dragons website. And finally, if this build is not quite what you're looking for, I do have the playlist for all of my other Fallout 76 builds in the description as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, drop me a comment, and if you're new here and want to see more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed with post notifications turned on. A huge shout out to my Patreon supporters and channel members for making videos like this possible. You're all legends and I love you all. As always, the links to my social media are in the description along with the links to my Patreon and channel membership if you want to support me in a much larger way. I've been Tia, and I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome to Valhalla.